Well, good day! So for today, I would like to talk about another failed TV pilot! Albeit an unconventional failed pilot, this one was done in the guise of an episode on an already established TV series. One of my favorite series is this, the original Star Trek. So like we always do, let's talk about the episode itself and then we'll get into the whole more uh, meat potatoes of the uh, stuff thereafter. So alright, let's go. Right on. So the Enterprise time traveled back to the 20th century on a historical research mission to find out how humanity was able to survive past 1968. Because really, nobody remembers the 60s, right? Like if you remember the 60s, you really weren't there, man. Suddenly, the ship is getting bombarded by this powerful transporter beam from like thousands upon thousands of light years away. Scotty is able to beam this person on to the ship and it turns out it's this guy named Gary Seven and his cat Iris. And Gary's like, what the hell are you doing, man? I'm just a dude from the 20th century who's been sent to the future by these aliens just so they can send me back so I can save the 20th century. I need to go back to Earth right now and stop something, man. Just send me back there. But Kirk has quite the dilemma on his hands. He's like, yeah, he could be telling the truth that he is an agent for good. But on the other hand, this could be some villainous plot to destroy humanity. Who knows, right? Instead of finding out what his mission is, Kirk just sends him to the brig. And he's like, yeah, don't worry, we'll try to figure this out ourselves. But nobody can really figure out if his story is true or not. According to McCoy, he's human, but too perfect to be human. Scotty doesn't know, and even Spock is perplexed. But Spock figures he's probably here because like right smartly, the United States is going to be launching a nuclear orbiting platform to rival other superpowers on Earth. And this could be potentially world destroying, devastating kind of thing in the near future. Meanwhile, Gary's totally fed up. He's like sick of being in the brig. He pulls out this wicked awesome thing, this servo pen, and it could do so many cool things. Like it, it could shut down a containment field in the brig. It can hypnotize crew members. So he busts out of the joint. He uses the transporters to beam down to his office on Earth. Which is actually pretty swanky looking good on him. But he's got to deal with this sassy mouth computer and see what's what on his mission. So apparently there was two other members of his team that were supposed to beam down to Earth like days ago. And they were supposed to start the sabotage prep on one of the nuclear missiles. But they totally died in a car crash. Nothing was done so Gary's got to do this himself. Well. Well, kind of, I, I guess. His secretary, Roberta Lincoln, shows up for work. Gary thinks she's all up and up on the whole mission that, you know, he's sent from the future, aliens, all that fun stuff, blah, blah, blah. But she don't really know, man. She's actually basically just like a temp secretary. <laughs> she's totally clueless to all that stuff. But, you know, she knows too much now. So, you know, you can't just fire her. Kirk and Spock beam down to this office so they can confront Gary. But Gary's like, screw this. He transports out to the McKinley rocket base and starts the whole sabotage thing on the racket there. Things are going pretty good, but Roberta accidentally transports Gary back to his office before he can get the job done. The rocket is launched, it's hurtling into space. So Gary uses this sassy ass computer to remotely finish the sabotaging job. He activates the warhead on it so ground control would have no choice but to destroy the warhead. But something goes wrong, they can't detonate it. This armed nuclear missile is now falling back to Earth. World War 3 is pretty much eminent if this thing hits Earth. Kirk and Spock beam it to the planet and they're like, okay man, I think you've done enough damage. Like, I don't think you're a good guy. You know, get away from this computer. Gary eventually convinces Kirk, hey man, let me go. Let me finish this mission. Which he does. He detonates the missile above the Earth's surface. Everything is saved and all good. And Kirk is happy that he's finally listened to his gut and made the right choice to trust this guy. So it looks like nothing in the timeline was altered. This was supposed to happen. And for some reason, Gary's cat, Iris, uh, turns into a human. <laughs> <laughs> because why not? And that is uh, where this fantastic uh, story ends. So like that was a pretty good episode, right? It is kind of weird that the main characters of the episode weren't the main characters in the series. I remember the first time watching this, I was like, oh, yeah, like what's up with that? Yeah, sure, Gary Seven's really important to the whole story, but he seems to be kind of hogging the whole story too. Well, you see, we get to the whole point now of how this is a failed pilot. It's not a conventional pilot where you have 
it on its own and tries to make its own series, this one is what's referred to as a backdoor pilot. It's kind of like a Hail Mary to try to get a new show made, and hopefully that show will be made as a spin-off of the series that it was in for that episode. So we could have had a spin-off in the 60s, you know, if the producers liked it, instead of in the 80s with Star Trek The Next Generation. But it didn't uh, work out so well for Gary Seven and them. I'm sure in some alternate reality, Star Trek Assignment Earth was a really big hit, but uh, not in this one. So like, it is a pretty good episode. I wouldn't say it's the best one. It's no city on on the edge of forever and it's no Spock's brain but you know still pretty decent but yeah maybe like a season of that would have been cool to see I guess we'll never know so this one works out pretty well as being fairly unique but still you know being fairly consistently Star Trek so good on them check it out if you haven't and uh, let's go see what else we can find out uh, about uh, this episode and stuff okay so let's just take a couple steps back first all right so you have Gene Roddenberry he was a writer on a bunch of shows even in the early 60s he produced a bunch of shows and he's like you know what I should just make my own TV series it'd be so much easier and really it'll be my own so he's pitched many shows a lot of them just didn't even get like approved to be made into a pilot he's had a couple that were but he finally got his first break with a pilot that got picked up for a series with a show called The Lieutenant it only lasted one season before getting cancelled and then shortly thereafter boom Star Trek hit the airwaves. And even then, in season two, like, it's like, it might get canceled after that. So he's like, I gotta think forward. I gotta make more shows. So he had the idea for Assignment Earth being its own show. He tried to get money from the studios to produce that pilot. They all said no. And he's like, damn, but he has this show Star Trek going on. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna make one of the episodes of Star Trek and I'll make it into a pilot. So that's why at the end of this episode, Spock mentioned that according to the history tapes, Gary and Roberta will have some interesting experiences in store for them. Of course, basically referring to a series that hopefully would get picked up if the studios like it, which unfortunately they didn't. And all we got from Gary Seven is this one episode. Well, for the most part. So if this show would have been picked up, the whole point of the series would be that Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln would be battling the villainous Omegans, the species who has mastered time travel and they want to wreak havoc on Earth, but Gary would be sent back to save humanity and make sure that they were able to achieve the glorious destiny that they were destined to disdain or something kind of honestly sounds a bit like doctor who and that's probably one of the reasons that they didn't go for it having the main time traveling character who can go across the galaxy with a companion heck gary seven even had that servo pen which is basically like doctor who's sonic screwdriver so yeah but in gene roddenberry's constant attempts to make a new tv series he did kind of rework the whole point of assignment earth into a new series it did get a pilot that was aired called the quester Tapes, where there are aliens who sent a humanoid android back in time to lead the humans to have them achieve their destiny. You know, same thing, but again, not picked up. But frit not, my friends, we would kind of get to see Gary and Roberta and the whole gang a little bit more. Not on television. Actually, well, almost the first attempt was an episode of Star Trek Voyager in 1995 called prime factors it did involve the voyager meeting up with a race of people out in space who had this fantastic transporter that could transport like hundreds of thousands of light years away and they're like man like we're trapped all the way out here that's our way to get home so originally that episode was supposed to feature the aliens that gary seven lived with and worked with and those aliens who sent gary seven hundreds of thousand light years through time to earth and it would have been pretty cool except the writers realized okay the whole point of voyager is, is how is this crew supposed to get back to earth it's basically supposed to be a lost in space if they had this technology that can send them back to earth like lickety split well then the series is over you know so they scrapped that idea and reworked it so meh so gary would live on in the wonderful world of books in 1997 there was kind of a sequel to this episode called assignment eternity there was a two-part book series in 2001 called Star Trek The U 
Nugenix War, the rise and fall of Con Nguyen Singh, pretty classic and amazing, and did feature Gary and Roberta, so that's pretty hip. 2007 had a short story in Strange New Worlds Volume 6 called Seven and Seven, which featured Gary Seven and Seven of Nine from Voyager. <laughs> 2013 had another book called From History's Shadow, featuring our time-traveling friends. And in the comic book world in 2008, IDW Comics put out a five-part miniseries called Assignment Earth. So even though the pilot wasn't picked up, it is pretty cool to see that these characters did kind of live on, at least in the non-canonical novel and comic form. And I'm sure we'll see them again, so yeah. But yeah, I guess until then, we'll have to wait. And uh, other than that, uh, that's that. Right on and there you go so thanks for watching the video i hope you liked it as much as i did making it also feel free to check out the source material that i featured in this video and if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things i might have missed in this you know feel free to do so or anything else you know just to say hi that's cool too and other than that you know uh, have a great day thanks